Hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories, wise tales from storytellers around the world, which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended from ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello Super Great Kids, how are you doing? We're continuing with our theme of fairy tales around the world. And the story I'm going to tell you this week is from Brazil in South America. It's a bit like the Cinderella story that so many of us are familiar with, which comes from France. It's got a princess and a prince in it, and someone who helps the princess get to the palace in a beautiful dress. But it's also a little different. Can you guess how many versions of Cinderella there are in the world? Why don't you have a little think about that while we have a quick word with the grown-ups? Hello, super great kids. Did you have a guess how many different versions of Cinderella there are in the world? Can no, you guess how many versions 100? of Cinderella there no, are in the world? More than 500. More than 100? There are. Are you ready? Over 500,000 versions no. of the Cinderella story there told around the world. There are over 1,000 versions the one we're going to hear of today Cinderella from stories Brazil told was collected and written down by a man called Silvio Romero over a hundred years ago. And it's got a rather unusual fairy godmother. Can you see if you can spot as you listen who you think the fairy godmother is? Are you sitting comfortably? Then I'll begin. Ready? Mouth open. Story jump out. Once upon a time in Brazil, or as they say in Brazil, era uma vez no Brasil, there was a king and a queen. But there was a great sadness in their life. They had no children. Every night the queen got on her knees and prayed, Please, God, Dayush, Dayush, por favor, send me a child, any child. I wouldn't care what I gave birth to, even a snake would do. And the years passed, and the years passed, and the queen did have a child. But there was something very strange about this child. She had a pale blue snake coiled around her neck. The midwife, the courtiers didn't know what to do. They got hold of the tail and they pulled and they pulled and they pulled, but then they stopped, afraid of strangling the baby. And very sadly, the night the princess was born, her mother died. But... The child grew and blossomed from a baby to a toddler, from a toddler to a girl, from a girl to a young woman, and all the time the snake grew with her. Every day the snake was the little girl's close friend and they chatted away together. The princess would go for walks along the beach. And that was the only time the snake would uncoil itself and slither along the beach beside the princess. And then it would go down to the edge of the sea, splashing and playing. One day, as the princess was walking along the water's edge and as the snake was slithering alongside her, the snake spoke. My sister, I must leave you. Today I am going to enter the water, and you may never see me again unless you need something, in which case I want you to come and call my name three times. La bismina, la bismina, la bismina. And if I can help you, I will. The years passed, and one day the king called to his daughter the princess and said, Good news! My friend the Count is going to marry you. 
He has lots of money and he'll look after you if anything happens to me. Now, the Count was old and crabby and had breath that smelt like a toilet. No! The princess appealed, horrified. Father, please, you can't do that to me. But the king said, I'm the king. I can do anything. And he left, slamming the door behind him. The princess felt panicked. She couldn't love a mean old man like the Count. What could she do? What could she do? Can you help? What do you think she could do? Yes, that's right, the snake. She ran down to the sea and called for her sister. Can you help me call for her? Let's call three times. Labismina, Labismina, Labismina. Ready? Labismina! Labismina, Labismina, and out of the waters came the snake. What can I do, Labismina? Our father, the king, he demands that I marry his friend, the count, who is old and bad-tempered and mean. Donna Labismina, please help me. Do not worry, sister. Tell your father you will only marry his friend if he can make you a dress out of the night sky with all the twinkling stars upon it. So the princess went off feeling much better. But the king told her that is not difficult. The count is wealthy. He can get whatever he wants. And in the morning, the dress was ready. So the next day, the princess was down by the water's edge again. Can you help me call her sister? Labismina, 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 please come. I'm lost. Look, look what father has produced. And she shook out a magnificent dress of shining silver with all the brilliance of the night sky upon it. And out of the waters came the snake. Don't worry, don't worry, said Donna Labismina. Tell your father you will only marry his friend if he can make you a dress out of the sun with all the colours of the dawn upon it. And so the princess went off, feeling a bit better. But the king told her, that is not difficult. The count, he is wealthy and he can get whatever he wants. And in the morning, the dress was ready. So the next day, the princess was down by the water's edge again. Can you help me call? Labismina, 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 I'm lost. Look, look what father's friend has produced. And she shook out a shining dress of gold with red and yellow and orange and pink and all the colours of the morning sun upon it. And out of the waters came her sister, the snake. Tss, tss, tss. Sister, do not worry. Tell your father you will only marry his friend if he can make you a dress the colour of the sea with all the fish of the ocean upon it. So the princess went off feeling a bit better. But the king told her, that is not difficult. I am the king and the count, he is very wealthy. He can get whatever he wants. And in the morning, the dress was ready. So the girl ran down to the seashore again. Can you help me call? Labismina, Labismina, Labismina. Look what father has produced. And she shook out a magnificent dress, the colour of the sea, woven with blue and green and white and purple flecks. And as she turned this way and that way, there were flickerings of silver and green and lilac like shoals of tiny fish moving across the waters. Oh, my sister, I am lost. And once more, out of the sea rose her snake sister, 
Not quite, said the snake, not quite. Come with me and put on your dress. So the princess obeyed, and the snake led her sister along the beach until they came to a port. And the snake thrashed its tail on the waters until along came a ship. And the snake said, Sail on this ship, my sister, for three days and three nights. And when the ship stops, get off. And in that land, you will find your true husband. But on the day of the wedding, come down to the water's edge and call my name. Because, you see, I too am a princess. But I was cursed by our mother's foolish words. And the only one to break this spell, my sister, is you. I need you to come and call me on the day of your wedding. Call me three times and I will be released from the sea and from the curse of being a snake forever. Do you promise? I do, I promise, said the princess. I do. And she kissed her sister and quickly ran to board the ship. Eventually, the ship stopped in a port in a land she did not know. And stretching away from her, up from the beach, was a flight of golden steps. And the princess, she walked up those steps, towards a gleaming castle. She knocked on the door, and when the prince answered, and saw the lovely princess in a dress shimmering like the sea, he could not believe his luck. He invited her in. And over tea and brigadeiro, which are delicious little cakes, they discovered they had much in common. A love of the sea and birdsong and going for long walks in the rainforest. And her laugh was like the tinkling of tiny stars. And the prince's heart, it thumped. Call off the ball, he told his courtiers. I have no need. I have found my love. Well, there was a great ruckus and preparations were immediately made for a magnificent wedding. And there was a delicious feast and the princess, she danced with her prince in the moonlight all night long. But in all the excitement, do you know what happened? What did the princess forget? <gasps> yes, she forgot her promise to her sister, Donna Labismina and she forgot to go down to the water's edge on the day of her wedding. And so, the princess, she married her love and lived happily ever after. But her sister is still a snake, trapped in the deep ocean. And if you go down to the seashore, and if you hear the sea roaring and hissing and lashing, don't think that it's just the water. It's Donna Labismina, the snake sister, grieving and angry at being forgotten. And that is where that story ends. Mouth open, story jump back in. Ooh, that's a strange story, isn't it? Just as well it's a story, Snake, because I, for one, love swimming in the sea and I'm not going to let a story stop me. Who do you think the fairy godmother was? Yes, it was the snake. She got her sister out of trouble and she got her to the prince's palace wearing the most beautiful dress. There's usually a fairy godmother in most versions of Cinderella, but... As we've just seen, it's not always a kindly old lady. In many Indian stories, the fairy godmother is a goat. In Russia, it's often a tree which grows out of Cinderella's mother's grave, which drops down dresses and food. And in China, it's a fish with golden eyes. If you were telling your own story of Cinderella, 
I wonder who your fairy godmother would be. And if your Cinderella would have slippers of green silk, like in the Irish version, or blue ram's wool, as in the Scottish version, or glass slippers, like in the French version? Well, I'll leave you to think about that. Now it's time to dip into my bag of happies and thank you all for the beautiful pictures and kind comments which you've been sending us. Thanks to six-year-old Claire from Glen Rock in New Jersey for her very happy picture of Molly and the Leprechaun. Claire and her four-year-old sister Nora love listening to our stories together. Thanks for sharing your pictures. And Alina, who is six, sent an imaginative picture of a baobab tree from the Magical Tree story. She and her brother Adam, who is four, really enjoy listening to our stories. And thanks to five-year-old Isaac from Kildare in Ireland for your pictures of Why the Whale Has a Sad Song and Nora and the Aki Fruit. Isaac, your drawings are so full of energy and action, they're really super great. And Charlie, who is six, drew a super scary picture of the big, bad wolf. All teeth and long legs. Ugh. Thanks for that, Charlie. And Justin in Missouri drew a beautiful rainbow picture because he loves rainbows and wanted the storytellers to be happy. Thanks, Justin. It certainly made me happy to see your rainbow. And thanks to four-year-old Yoshi for his picture of Stick Woman. Great writing too, Yoshi. Well done. And thanks to Anwen, who is eight, from Vancouver in Canada, who drew a brilliant picture of Nora and the Aki fruit. And thanks to her brother Ashton, who is five, who wanted us to know that he loved the story The Little Things, told by Nick Hennessy. I love that story too, Ashton. I listened to it with my boys at Christmas and got goosebumps. And August, who is five, sent an imaginative and colourful picture of a story which she made up herself, the rainbow elephant who lost her colour. More thanks to come for your pictures next week. If you'd like to send in your pictures, send them via Facebook Messenger on facebook.com forward slash supergreatkidsstories or via our website, supergreatkidsstories.com. Now... Without our sponsors and subscribers, we wouldn't still be here. So, you know who you are and we're very grateful to you every day. Thanks this week to Francis, who is five, and Otis in California. And to Rory and Tara and to Eugenia. And thanks to our new Patreon subscriber, David J. If you'd like us to thank you in person and you subscribe on Apple, please ask... We can't see the names of our subscribers on Apple Podcasts, but we're so very grateful to you all. Our entire podcast is supported by kindness and generosity. Thank you all so much. If you'd like to give a one-off donation for any amount on Ko-fi, or subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts and get bonus stories, ad-free stories and early access, or on Patreon and get all of that, plus a Zoom session with a story from me and a chance to ask me questions, then go to our website on supergreatkidstories.com. That's it for this week. See you soon. This podcast was produced by Wardour Studios in London.